The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday of Easter. It's a blessing for us to once again be together. Even though we can't be together physically yet, we are together emotionally and spiritually in beautiful ways through the means of this digital and online campus of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Wherever you may be today, thanks for being with us and welcome. It's also a weekend that we celebrate Memorial Day in the United States, and so we give thanks and praise for that as well and wish you a blessing in this time of worship. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship now. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift that is baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us waters from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in our baptismal font in the sanctuary, and for all water everywhere, even the water in this city water tower. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one community of love throughout the whole wild world. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere their high communion bind. His service is the golden cord, most binding humankind. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whatever your race may be. All children of the living God are surely kin to be. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of 
the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our Together we share in prayer. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite, Unite us with, with Christ us. and each, each other, other in suffering and in joy, that all, all the world, world may be drawn into your bountiful presence, presence through Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad that you are here and able um, to join us wherever you are at. Um, so today's gospel reading is all about prayer. You're going to hear about how Jesus is praying. And more importantly, um, he is praying to God about all of his people, about all of his disciples. We have talked a lot in church school about prayer. We talk about how you can pray anywhere um, at any time, and you can pray for anything and for everybody in your lives, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, um, teachers, friends, you can pray for everybody. Um, your prayer can be a prayer that you have memorized, maybe the Lord's Prayer, or a prayer that you um, say before bed. Or your prayer can be super short about whatever is on your mind at that particular time. The important thing to remember is that God wants to hear what is on your mind. He wants to hear from you and he never, ever, ever gets tired of hearing from you. One of my favorite Bible verses is pray without ceasing. Now, the word ceasing means stopping. So during this Bible verse, God is reminding us that we need to pray without stopping. Pray without ceasing. Now, here's the amazing part. Just as hard as you are praying about people in your life, your family, your friends, your teachers, they are praying for you as well. Knowing that somebody is praying for you, boys and girls, makes your heart feel really, really good. Our Bible story today reminds us that Jesus was praying for his disciples, for his people. Guess what? We are all of God's people. So as we are talking to God and praying for others, Jesus is praying for for us too. And that's a pretty amazing thing. Boys and girls, when you are happy and excited, when you are sad and afraid, Jesus is with us. And more importantly, he is praying for us. And that is a fabulous way to think about praying. So let's close in prayer. Clasp your hands and bow your heads and you can repeat after me. Wonderful, amazing God, thank you for prayer. Help us to always remember to turn to prayer first for all things and help us to remember that just as often as we are praying we are being prayed for and all God's children say amen have a great weekend bye the first scripture reading comes from the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6 through 14 so when they had come together they asked him Lord is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you 
to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samurai, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. They then returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Oliviet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zeliot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 68. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But the, let, let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyce, joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is, is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inhabitants when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provisions for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel. Give power and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second scripture reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, starting on verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the same name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. And then we continue in chapter 5 with verse 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. 
Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of St. John in the 17th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you have given me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they, know that, now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf, I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the risen Christ. Amen. You know what, this is the only, the third time since March 1st that I have stood in this pulpit in order to share the gospel with all of you. Of course, I've preached more than three times since March 1st. Hopefully you've been part of some of those sermons along the way. Truth be told, I think I've worked harder and more intensely in the past 12 weeks or so than I ever have before. And I know many of our staff and other colleagues of mine would say the same thing. Being church in the time of COVID-19 is unlike any other time in human history, which is part of the reason why I'm so thankful for Jesus' teaching that comes to us today from the Gospel of St. John. Knowing that I'm held in prayer by so many people, people I know and, and people I've never met before, is sustaining. And knowing that I'm held in prayer by my pastoral colleagues and the other staff members of our team at Good Shepherd, by hundreds of brothers and sisters just like you who have reached out in a variety of ways in recent weeks, and by leaders of our congregation who serve on committees and or our church council, it, it's given me strength. Knowing that I'm held in prayer by my Savior Jesus gives me life. To put it very simply and directly, there is no way that I would be able to serve as your pastor today without prayer. I know I would not have heard God's call to ordained ministry nearly 20 years ago without prayer. And I believe I couldn't be a gracious father or spouse, son or citizen, friend or disciple of Jesus without prayer. Now, the entire 17th chapter of John's gospel is one long, extended prayer. It's often called the high priestly prayer. It comes at the end of a section of John's farewell gospel, or of John's gospel called the farewell discourse. It, that begins around chapter 14. Now, unlike other times in the gospels when Jesus is praying, this time is a little bit different because this time we know the context, content and context of his prayer. He hasn't gone away to be alone on a mountainside or in the wilderness. He's near his disciples, and I believe 
He wants them to hear what and for whom he's praying. And I truly believe he wants his disciples like you and me to also hear this prayer, even in 2020. There are three major sections to the high priestly prayer in John 17. In the first eight verses, Jesus is offering prayer for his own mission and ministry in the world and how his relationship with God has shaped this mission. In the middle verses, Jesus offers prayer for the community of his followers, those that God has already given to Jesus. And beginning at verse 20, Jesus offers prayer for those who will become his followers and for the union they share in God through Christ. Now, throughout the Gospels, Jesus prays in a variety of places and ways. And in every place and way, his prayer life directly impacts and shapes his ministry. On this seventh Sunday of Easter, I don't want us to miss that point, the point of just how important Jesus' times of prayer are and how they directly connect us to his mission and ministry. Since prayer is so important to Jesus' life and connected to the rest of his life, maybe we should pay attention to the rhythm of prayer a bit more in our own life than we sometimes do. 16th century church reformer Martin Luther is known to have said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Now, I have a a variety of locations where I often spend time in prayer. Here are a couple of them to share with you. Where do you spend time in prayer? Share with your brothers and sisters who are worshiping with you today. You can do so by posting your prayer locations in the comments or visiting with the people that you might be sitting with in worship in wherever location, whatever location that might be. There's also a variety of ways in which we pray as God's children. I mean, new ways of prayer continue to be revealed to me throughout my faith journey. I mean, maybe you can relate to that as well. Share some of the ways you pray with your brothers and sisters. Maybe they'll learn a new prayer practice from you today. So to go further into the point of just how important prayer is for Jesus, remember prayer shapes who Jesus is as the Savior of the world throughout the Gospels. Prayer shapes who you and I are as children of God. The Apostle Paul reminds us of this in his first letter to the church in Thessalonica. Rejoice always, Paul writes, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, as I'm sure you already know, this is also Memorial Day weekend in the United States. It's a holiday that we don't necessarily share with other nations like Valentine's Day or Easter. And it's not an official holiday directly connected to the church, but it is a holy and important holiday nonetheless. This year Memorial Day is causing me to remember and give thanks to God for brothers and sisters who have already died in the faith, to remember them and give thanks for the ways their prayer life shapes my own prayer life today, whether I'm even fully aware of that truth. I think that's what the writer of Hebrews is talking about when they wrote, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And on the last couple of weeks, I've been honored to to preside at the committal services of three of God's children who called Good Shepherd their faith home. Two of them buried at the North Dakota Veterans Cemetery south of Mandan and one in in a Logan County Cemetery where many of my ancestors are buried or near where they are buried. Every time I'm at the North Dakota Veterans Cemetery, I'm struck by its beauty. I stand in awe of its mystery. The perfectly placed headstones, the rolling prairie hillside, the gently flowing Missouri River in the distance, the gentle breeze touching my face. This is a place of peaceful rest, even as we remember that many of the saints who are buried here did not die during peaceful times. As I stand on this holy ground, if I listen quietly, I can hear Jesus praying, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. 
It's a holy prayer to hear as I stand on the hillside of the North Dakota Veterans Cemetery this Memorial Day weekend. As I stood at the graveside of a sister in Christ with a family who loved her deeply standing near, I could hear the quiet whisper of Jesus praying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may, be glorif may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. It's a holy prayer as we laid to rest one of God's own daughters. I also took a few minutes to stand again on the sacred ground where many of my own ancestors are buried. Most of them first came to the United States as immigrants or refugees. It's a place where a small church and community once stood, a church where my parents' wedding was held. It's a place that at first glance now appears to be abandoned and dead. But if you quiet the noise of the world and listen carefully, you might just hear Jesus praying, all mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. That's a holy prayer for my ancestors whom I have yet to meet face to face. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this seventh Sunday of Easter and Memorial Day weekend, how do your prayer practices shape your faith life? As 20th century theologian, Swiss theologian Karl Barth said, to clasp the hands in prayer is the beginning of an uprising against the disorder of the world. Now, I assume there are at least a few parts of your life that have been disrupted by the disorder of the world over the past couple of months, far more than simply changing the location of where I've been or able to preach the gospel. There have been dozens, no, hundreds of times when my life has been dis disrupted by the disorder of the world recently. The world that I knew in February is not the world I know today. And the world I know today will not be the same world later this summer. So on this day and every other day that God blesses me with, I simply take Karl Barth's wisdom to heart, clasp my hands in prayer, and pray. Please join me. Good and gracious God, you walk with us in all things and at all times in our work, in our play, in our rest, and in our prayer. May our worship and prayer together today renew us, strengthen us, and send us into the world to be your children. And may we be blessed as we share your unconditional love and grace with our neighbor. In Jesus' name, amen. I will come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fears You will hear my voice I claim you as my choice Be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are hopeless I am eyes for all who long to see In the shadows of the night I will be your light Come and rest in me Do not be afraid, I am with you I have called you each by name Come and follow me, I will bring you home, I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing. Healing for the ones who dwell in shame 
All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are gone. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. Together with the church in heaven and on earth, we join together in affirming our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So at this point in our worship service, we remember and give thanks. Give thanks to God for all that God has given to us first in order that we may give it to others to bless and serve them. I give thanks in these days of COVID-19 for your continued support of Good Shepherd's mission and ministry. It ensures that we remain strong as a congregation in our community in these days in order to remain even stronger in the days long past COVID-19. It's the gifts of our hands, our feet, our voices, and our financial resources that enable this work to happen. Let's offer a word of prayer for all that God has given to us in this time. Please join me in the offering prayer. God of love, you are present in all things. Be present to a hurting world. Help us use the offerings and tithes we receive to create a community of love and a place of belonging for all people. Help us reach those who seek and those who doubt. Use the gifts of our hands, feet, voices, in financial resources to help people know the blessings of being your beloved children. Amen. We also know that it's Memorial Day weekend and a great weekend in which we celebrate and give thanks for all who have sacrificed so much on our behalf. Members of our military community, members of our emergency services community. This year we give thanks for members of our emergency services communities in new ways and also add to that list medical providers in so many ways. And so on this Memorial Day weekend, let's join together in a Memorial Day blessing and prayer specific for this year. Together we pray. Ruler of the nations, our strength, our shield, and our sustainer. We thank you for the devotion of all people who have committed themselves to military service for their country. We pray for those who did not return home, for those who did return home, and for those who are now away from home. On behalf of their fellow citizens, they stepped into harm's way and gave up time with those they love and carried the weight of respect and duty. For their lives, 
we give you thanks. Amen. Let us join together in a hymn of thanksgiving on this Memorial Day weekend. things that we've been trying to do over the last several weeks in our worship life together is to lift up various ministries that we partner with as the Congregation of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. One of those ministries that we lift up for us, for you this weekend, is the ministry of the Lutheran World Federation. The Lutheran World Federation is a, is a community of 148 different Lutheran denominations around the world, of which we are one. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America is the only Lutheran body from the United States that is part of the Lutheran World Federation. The Lutheran World Federation is about 75 million Lutheran Christians around the world in 99 different countries. And over the last several weeks of COVID-19, they have periodically been releasing prayers of the church for us to share together. And so the prayers of God's people for this weekend come to us from the Lutheran World Federation. And so we join together with Lutheran Christians around the world and offer our prayer this day. Ya Allah, Shafina. يا إله الرحمة والبر ترأف علينا نحن البشر في وسط حالة الاضطراب هذه ووسط معاناة المرض والخوف وافتقدنا بعنايتك إلى الرب نطلب استجب يا رب كباتوين لونتو بيانا نيدو كورونا فيروس جان منام جان بيانيدو دميا لغان دوين ميدازوين مياني virus po shi ni do mai sui apong te mya a ke ma tana ro mu yan chwa la do mu ba bya a chano do i o hi ngo chui tan ko na yong do mu ba bya yuan shang zhu si xia ni de ai gei wo man bing jie jiao wo man dong de zi lu rang wo man tuan jie yi zhi dui kang yi qing 
，愿主垂听我们的呼求，求主俯听我们的祷告。Lass uns wachsam, achtsam und proaktiv bei der Ausrottung aller Krankheiten sein, Malaria, Dengue, HIV und AIDS und die Leid verursachen und oft zum Tod vieler Menschen führen. Höre unser Rufen, o、oh、Gott, erhöre unser Gebet. Sana nuestro egocentrismo e indiferencia, que nos lleva a estar preocupados, preocupadas, solo cuando el virus nos amenaza. Abre caminos que van más allá de la timidez y el miedo, y que fácilmente nos hace ignorar a nuestro prójimo. Escucha nuestro clamor, oh Dios. Escucha nuestra oración. Vahvista ja rohkaise heitä, jotka työskentelevät terveydenhuollon tehtävissä. Hoitohenkilökuntaa, sairaanhoitajia, vartioita, lääkäreitä, kaikkia joiden tehtävänä on hoitaa sairaita ja heidän läheisiään. Kuule huutomme. O Jumala, kuule rukouksemme. Accorde l'inspiration et l'espoir à toutes les équipes qui font de la recherche pour développer un vaccin. Seigneur, entends notre cri. Écoute notre prière. Varðveit og stið öll þau sem tapa lífsviður væri sínu og meðan farandurinn gengur yfir. Vegna lokana vinnustaða og landamæra, ein án grunar. Sótt kvíar og annara hindrana. Verenda og varðveit þau öll sem þurfa að ferðast. Guð, við ákvöllum þig. Heyr þá bæn og guð. Bimbinglah para pemimpin pemerintahan, agar mereka menyampaikan apa yang terjadi, menghentikan penyebaran informasi yang keliru, dan bertindak dengan adil, sehingga semua yang sakit tertangani dengan baik, Dan menjadi sembuh. Dengarkan tangisan kami, ya Tuhan. Dengarkan doa kami. Uzdrawiaj nasz świat. Uzdrawiaj nasze ciała. Wzmacniaj nasze serca i umysły. A wśród chaosu daj nam nadzieję i pokój. Usłysz nasze wołanie, Boże. Wysłuchaj naszej modlitwy. Katika upendo wako wapoke wale wote wale fariki na wale watakao fariki leo wafariki wapendo wao katika uzuni yao. E Mungu sikia kilio chetu usikie kuomba kwetu. Yengal alagaye kete yengal chabatirke sevi kodutharulam kathave umada anbin makalayum மனித குலம் அனைத்தையும் மற்றும் உமது படைப்புகளையும் உமது அன்பில் நினைத்தருளும் ஆமேன்Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as our Lord Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We are all one in Christ. We are one body, all one people out of many. 
we are all one, in Christ we are one body, all one people, out of many, there is one God, and only one Lord, there is one faith, one holy love, there is one baptism, there is one spirit, who is God, the Comforter? We are all one in Christ, we all one body, all one people, out of many. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people, out of many. There is one God and only Lord. There is one faith, one holy love. There is one baptism, there is one spirit. Who is God, the Comforter?